I need to talk to you about how a bunch of prison inmates spoke more truth about being a man than any group of guys I've ever seen before. It happened in a documentary called The Feminist on Cell Block Y, and I can't stop thinking about it. We probably never heard anybody say anything like, well, he objectifies women, therefore I feel like he's a real man. Nobody says that. What are some of the things that we hear in the community where we're talking about, oh, he's a real one because he objectifies women? He's a pimp. He's a pimp. He's a player. He got hoes, he got bitches, right? Same thing with violence. We might not say, oh, he's willing to be violent, therefore I respect his manhood. Nobody says that. But what people might say is, oh, he's with the bullshit. From the get-go, this documentary feels like a revolution. This is a group of the most traditionally masculine men possible. Convicts, felons, so-called hardened criminals. But those are just labels we use in society to dismiss them, to take away their humanity. But a program in Soledad State Prison called Success Stories helps to show these men as complete people. People who love and are loved, who seek to better themselves because they truly want to improve the world around them. They want to make sure they don't do harm again. Kind of like we all try to do. Integrity is painful, but without it there can be no wholeness. To be whole, men must practice integrity. No, I think that's really big. If I would have no, if I would have known all this back then, I would have been a different person. I would have never committed the murder that I committed. There was a lot of things that I would have never done. A truly striking thing about this documentary is the way it shows how men can just be amongst other men. No fronts, no masks. They have nothing to lose and the entire world to gain by connecting with their emotions, sharing them, and finding camaraderie amongst these people some in our society may only ever see as the bad guys. It's honestly one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. I mean that. The whole part of existing in this world has nothing to do with being a man. It has everything to do with being human. It unfortunately feels as rare as winning the lottery or actually liking Bill Maher. And for some men I know, and, and maybe some you know, this program might feel like Avatar, some made up place that could never actually be real. And I get that but it is real, and it can be for you too. One of the most evocative stories is short and to the point from a man named James who was raised by a preacher. Um, at 15, I murdered somebody. I crossed his path. We exchanged you know, words and aggression, and I left, got a gun, came back and shot him. I did it because I was small, and I don't mean that physically, but I mean emotionally, like, my self-esteem, I felt small, and I wanted to feel big. And that was a chance for me to feel big. I felt small, and that was a chance for me to feel big. In this moment, James reveals the rawest root of all men. The only reason we get violent, harass women, rape, murder, and kill at such high rates. Men feel small, and they want to feel big. And the only way to help men feel less small, even though it may be tough sometimes, is to love them. Love men out of their smallness, out of their weakness, out of their shame. And for the men out there watching this, that means loving yourself and working to keep men you love around in your life. Not isolating, not distancing, doing the work of male friendship because it's worth it. So hopefully you never feel that small again. My brother was murdered for 10 years, I would think about if I caught this dude, because they arrested him. Found him guilty. It's about five days after my birthday, I turned 25. When I get in the visiting room, sit down with my mom and my sister, and my mom points to a guy in the visiting room and says, who is that? This is a brother I've been talking to for two years, lived on the same tier as me. She looks back to my sister, looks back to me, and says, that's him. This was the guy who duct taped and murdered my brother. My life is over, I'm not going home, I gotta kill him. And the more I argued with God, the more it became clear. Ain't nobody making you do nothing. Ain't nobody making me do nothing. Nobody making me retaliate and get revenge for my brother. Nobody's forcing me to have this sense of duty that I have. This is something that you're choosing and you can make another choice. James, right there, did it. He cracked the bro code. Okay, he finally realized that the rules that he thought were immovable forces the laws of manhood weren't real. I mean, they're just not real. Patriarchy, as, as the guys will learn today, is the biggest hindrance to our success. 
we all had these great dreams and stuff when we were little kids, but at some point it was more important for us to be tough. It was more important for us to be, um, to not back down or whatever, to buy into toxic masculinity. And everybody, and I'm, I'm willing to assert that everybody in that room, including myself, put what the patriarchal expectations that the world had on us before our own goals. And one more huge takeaway from the doc uh, is the practical application of anti-patriarchal mindsets. Now, all these ideas seem, seem cool, right? They're cool, but how do they hold up with women, with friends on the streets? Well, once again, James has an answer to that. And you guys are telling me to teach them to cry and it's okay to do this and it's okay to do that, but yet when they go to school, kids ain't like that. I'm, I'm from Granada Hills, California, and there's a lot of white people right there, and the white people is mean sometimes, and they could be on you, you know what I'm saying? I can understand me putting this to my life because that's what I have to do in order to stay out. But teaching this to my kid, I want to know on a real note how you guys expect me to do that. So when he goes to school and he comes back and he's like, Pop, they calling me gay because I want to play with the girls. Pop, they calling me gay because I'm crying. I'm saying it is our job to instill in him integrity. You are who you are. When I forgave the dude who killed my brother, all the stuff was popping up for me. Pop, they saying I'm going to be a mark. Pop, they might take my stuff. Dang, I ain't really no G because I ain't did this for my brother. I ain't really no gangster like that, man. That might mean it was uncertain. But I cared about that. I cared about my mama, who before I left the visit said, don't kill him, I want you home. Overall, this movie is a crash course in how to be a better man, how to be brave against these unwritten rules we've inherited. The Feminist in Cell Block Y is a bunch of lessons from the teachers that you never knew you needed. Men in prison. But really, they're just men. Just like you.